I am Marika and today we have some fun things in plan because I will be showing you how to make the scrumptious gumbas al ojilo, shrimp and garlic sauce, breaded chicken casserole, and to go with it, buku salad royale for dessert. Thank you to want to miss. So let's get started and have some fun in this show where there is no greater love than the love for food. Kitchen Diaries! So now we're ready for cooking the breaded chicken casserole. But before that, here are some few ingredients that we need to get started. So, what will be we needing? Um, first, we have to have chicken. Just a breast chicken cut in cubes. Our ham, as well cut, cut in cubes. Paprika. And we need to have a butter. Rock salt or coarse salt if you have any. And then cheese to add additional flavor to our chicken. And of course, bread crumbs. And, um, one cup of milk and two egg yolks of egg, of course, and our black pepper. And I think we need to get started. So firstly, we'll just go ahead and season our chicken. We'll just season them with salt and black pepper. Okay. So firstly, we'll just have our black pepper. By the way, do you know that chickens can crossbreed with turkeys? And the result for that was called as turkin. I mean, you know, right? I don't know. I think I just know about that one. And okay, so additional to add flavor, we'll just have our salt. Just to add additional flavor to the chicken. Just don't put too much salt, you know? There's a tendency that your chicken can be too salty. So, okay, after that, we will dip our chicken into the egg. Okay, here's our egg, just dip it. Then, to the milk. And of course, our breadcrumbs to add coated to our chicken and to add formation as well. Just place it in a simple plate and just go on so forth with everything. You know what, when I was little, cooking breaded chicken took me hours and hours to make. But they were beautiful dishes, and I know how to cook that way. Yeah, okay. So just go on and so forth with everything and just finish. And after doing everything, after we dip our chicken with the egg and then our milk and then our breadcrumbs, we'll just go ahead and deep fry our chicken. Now remember, always clean your chicken before seasoning everything because there's a tendency that cross-contamination will happen. And you know that bacteria can cause not just only food poison to people, they can as well have like stomach aches, have them the reason to be hospitalized and you don't want that to happen, right? You just don't. So always remember to do your hygiene and sanitation. It's very important. Now we're done coating our chicken. The next procedure that we are going to do is that we are going to deep fry them in a hot oil. So we'll just go ahead and turn this on. Just do it in low pressure, okay? So the next step that we are going to do is that we are going to deep fry our chicken in our canola oil. By the way, here are some facts that everyone should know about canola. Um, do you know that canola doesn't come from a natural plant? Actually, it came from a rapeseed plant. It's from Canada originally. Now, canola oil was made, it is because that it's from Canada, right? It's, it's originated from Canada. So Canada was combined with the name oil. So they come up with the name canola oil. Like, it can be good for the body as well. It can be healthy. So we are going to deep fry our chicken till golden brown. Remember that, okay? We've already finished frying our chicken. Now we place them on top of a tissue paper so that it can remove the excessive oil your chicken produces. 
Now, so the next step is that we will be kneading a butter. So we'll just grease the butter in our baking dish to add aroma and additional flavor to our chicken. Now we are going to place our chicken on top of our butter. Just place it here. Okay. If you want, you can have as many chickens as you like, or you can just have you no know, good for two or just one people. That will be fine. So just place it. Okay. So. Now the next step is that we will put our ham on top of our chicken. So as I've said before, we will be needing a ham. You have to cut them in cubes. So just stop our ham on top of our chicken. Just place it there. And you can have as many hams as you like or you can have little by then. But that would still be fine. It would be okay as well. It just adds additional flavor to our chicken. We'll just place them on top. Now we are going to grate our cheese on top of our chicken and on our ham. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and do that. You know, adding a cheese can add sweetness to our chicken, so it adds additional flavor. Add many or you can do it less well it's up to you if you're diabetic well I prefer don't have cheese upon your chicken so I think that will be all and okay now what I have here is a liquid mix of chicken soup and one cup of milk so we'll just go ahead and just stir everything and then this will be the outcome of our liquid mixture so it's just one cup of milk and chicken soup so we'll just place this one just add just a little bit. It's just the salt, so this will just be a sauce for your chicken. And don't put too much. Okay. So the next step is just we'll cover this one and we'll paste them on the oven. Now remember, you always have to preheat your oven 325 to 350 degrees. So we'll just go ahead and place this on our oven for 15 to 20 minutes or till we see that the chicken is already bubbly. Now, go ahead, come on. So, we'll just go ahead and do that and open. Our chicken is still in the oven. To maximize the time, let's proceed to our next recipe. But before that, let's take a short break because scrumptious gumbas al hilo, shrimp and garlic sauce will be right on your way. Welcome back food lovers, now we'll get hit in our appetizer, the gambas a la hilo shrimp and garlic sauce. Ooh, sounds new right? Now, let's get started. So what we'll be needing for our appetizer. So firstly we should need the shrimp, so thoroughly clean your shrimp. As I've said before, cross contamination can always happen, so that's why it is very important to clean your food or always wash them. And then our parsley. And of course, three cloves of chopped garlic and Spanish paprika. And then of course, to season our shrimp, we need rock of salt and our black pepper. So now let's get started. So firstly, we'll just have our shrimp. We'll just go ahead and season our shrimp with our salt. So don't put too much salt, okay? There's a tendency that this would be too much salty. So we'll just add a little bit of this. And after doing so, we'll place our salt, I'm sorry, our shrimp on a strainer to absorb the salt 
on our shrimp. Now the next step is that we are going to heat our stove just in a low pressure to not overcook our shrimp. Mm -hmm. Add our canola oil, which is good. And for our body, just go ahead and add a little. And we'll just, it'll just take a couple of seconds till it's heat up and that will be the time for us to fry our garlic. The next procedure is that we are going to need our spatula and we are going to fry our garlic. Now always remember just to fry them in a low pressure, not to overcook them, okay? So just wait till our garlic is light brown. That will be the time to add us, I'm sorry, to add our paprika. Mmm, smells good. Now the next step is to put our shrimp with our garlic. Just place it here. Okay. So just place it in a low pressure. Okay, not to overcook everything. And add additional can of oil. Okay. Did you know that an average number of legs a shrimp has is 10? And that the length of their head is just the same as their body? Well, there are some facts about that. So we'll just wait. Now, how will we know that our shrimp is already cooked? Simple. If it's already pinkish, that's the time that we can say that our shrimp is already cooked. So don't overcook your shrimp, okay? We'll just go ahead and steer. And add additional paprika, just to add an additional flavor and taste to our shrimp. Just add additional, just a pinch of it, that would be fine. You can add too much if you want it spicy, or you can add a little if you just want it mild. So we'll just go ahead and steer. Tail, it's already pink. That would be the time for us to take up our shrimp. Okay. I think our appetizer is done. Now the next step is just we'll just place it here. Okay. Okay. Just add a little mixture of garlic to go with your shrimp. Just place it there. Okay, and afterwards we'll just add a little parsley on it. So just to make everything clear. Okay. There you go. And just add a little parsley, okay? You can just put it on top. So, I think our appetizer is done and, hmm, it smells really good. I think we should go ahead and check our main course. I think it's already done, okay? Yeah, it seems that our main course is already done. Uh, I can see right here that our Cheese is already melted. Both the ham and the chicken are cooked and it's, it looks really creamy and nice as well. So we'll just set this aside and we'll just proceed to our dessert. So don't go away because Kitchen Diaries will be right back. lovers now our breaded chicken casserole is already done and our gumbas al shrimp and garlic sauce 
is also done. Now let's proceed to our dessert that will be the buco salad royale and let's get started. So what ingredients will we be needing? Of course, we must have our coconut, our chunks of pineapple, our table cream, as well as our condensed milk, and your sugar can be optional. If ever like your salad doesn't taste really good or it doesn't taste sweet, we can add sugar to that. But if it's really okay, then it's not necessary. And of course, our fruit cocktail, and as well as our nata de coco. So now let's get started. We'll just mix everything together. And okay, to start off with, we'll just start with this one. As well as our fruit cocktail. Combinations of pineapple and cherries. And our coconut as well. So just mix them all together. Now, after everything, we'll just go ahead and mix them up. There you go. Just mix everything together, okay? So after mixing everything, we'll just go ahead and add your table cream as well as your condensed milk. Forget. Now we'll mix them all together so that to distribute the ingredients all together. And you know what's my little, little secret about this one? Is that I just mix up the sauce of our fruit cocktail to make it more sweeter. So, just add this one up, don't forget. Yeah. Our buco salad is already done, and uh, we'll just go ahead and just place it at the back, okay? Now, the best advice that I could give is that you can go ahead and put it in the refrigerator, and we could just always have it in a normal temperature. So we'll just go ahead and paste our dessert just at the side of our main course. Now, just a question, is a coconut a fruit, a nut, or a seed? Well, botanically speaking, a coconut is a fibrous one seeded droop, also known as a dry droop. However, when using loose definitions, the coconut can be all three, a fruit, a nut, and a seed. So there you have it guys, one meal for everybody. I hope you had fun cooking with me, food lovers. Once again, I'm Marika. Join me again next time on a show where there is no greater love than the love for food. Kitchen Diaries, toodles! Now, today we have it, guys. One meal for everybody. I hope you Hi, Shushmi! Hi, Shushmi! Hi, Shushmi! Hi, Shushmi!